This episode brought to you by Element, L-M-N-T, a zero sugar electrolyte drink mix formulated for anyone on a mission to restore health through hydration. It's perfect for athletes, folks who are fasting, or anyone following keto, low carb, whole food, or paleo diets. Each stick pack delivers a dose of our electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or those other dodgy ingredients you see in other sports drinks. Also, receive a free Element sample pack with any order. Just use drinkelement.com forward slash Flint. That's L-M-N-T, drinklmnt.com forward slash Flint for a free sample pack with any order of Element. And remember, stay salty. Well, welcome to episode number 87. Not even born in 1987. Uh, welcome to the show for the very first time. However, the first father-son guest combination on the show, the old man was on some time ago. Rookie PBR bull rider, I'll call you a sensation. One and only John <laughs> Crim, John Crimber. Yeah, we had your dad on before you. I apologize, John. I, hey, that, it's all right, you know. Uh, I guess he'll, you know, he's he's older, so let the old man go first. <laughs> let the you gotta let the old man, the old <laughs> the old man with the you know give him a bad time and yeah. Uh, um, you, I, I, I want to start with this because in the pro, inside baseball, in the process of of getting this recorded, we delayed a day. Uh, you let me know ahead of time. I do want everybody to know you were very good about it. Point being, you were going to practice. Yes, and, sir. I was. Go ahead. I was going to get on some bulls. It's about three and a half hours away, and uh, we had to leave right at twelve thirty. So. That's what time we we're going to do it. And I had to let you know. Like, well, you know, I don't think it's going to work. In, in, I do a lot of Q&A things, and I'm sure you have too, and probably a common question. I think people not around bull riding and stuff, they always are like, well, what do guys do to practice this? It's not like you just go get on bulls. Well, yeah, you yeah. do. How often uh, a guy that's on, you're on the elite tour of the PBR, you're getting on great bulls every week. How often do you get on practice bulls? I get on practice bulls every week, uh, at least one time a week. Uh, on usually on Wednesdays, because you know we get get home Sunday or Monday, and uh, you know we're kind of sore, banged up. So we'll go. I'll go to physical therapy or something, get ice bath or all that stuff, and then I'll go Wednesday. I'll feel good, and about the day before I leave, so I'll go get on practice bulls on Wednesdays. What are you getting on when you get on practice bulls? D- describe the bulls you're getting on. So yesterday, actually, I got on a bull where I rode him, and it was a bull that Caden Bunch was actually 89 on at a PBR Teams event, and he won the event for the team. So, I mean, it's pretty pretty similar to what we're getting on every weekend, and that's what I try to get on, you know. It's stuff kind of what we're used to getting on every weekend. So uh, that's what that's kind of what caliber so I get on. Your game speed, man. You're, yeah, your sir. game <laughs> Um, we're ready to go. If if you were, you know, a lot of guys talk about when they start kind of if they're in a slump or something, then you tone it down to get back to basic stuff, but you're feeling good, you're riding good. So you're just trying to keep that level, so to speak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So whenever you're in a slump, you try to get back to the basics and all that stuff. But whenever you're riding good, you know, you go get on some of that bucking harder and all that stuff. And so you just get the feel of it still and uh keep it going, you know, uh, that's how I look at it. Um, when you go to practice, do you say I got to go practice or do you say shit? Yeah. I get to go practice. I get to go practice. That's what I say. <laughs> I, I, it's never, I got to, uh, it's always, I'm going to, it's, 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 it's fun. You know, uh, it's always fun getting on bulls. I love getting on bulls and, uh, there's whenever I hurt my hand and stuff, I wasn't able to do that. So, I wasn't like feeling confident every weekend, but whenever I go get on practice bulls, it's like uh, I'm confident and ready to go. You know. Good point. You missed you missed some events. Yes, Injury. sir. I did. What uh, t- what was going on? So I hurt my hand in Canada right before the UTB season started, and uh, it was kind of bothering me. You know, like I couldn't shut my hand. And the first UTB, I 
I did all right. I rode one bull and won the round and all that. And then the second one, I took actually two weeks off before. I didn't ride anything. I didn't do much. It was like we had like a two-week break before the other one in St. Louis, and I didn't do nothing. I just kind of stayed home, and we actually moved and stuff, so we were just moving and all that. Never got on practice. And then uh, I didn't do so well. My hand was bothering me, and I was kind of, you know, not confident enough of myself and my hand, so I went and finally got it checked out. And he told me, like, man, the only way it's going to get better is it's if you take time off, you know, because it was a bunch of ligaments and stuff messed up in there. So I had to take some time off, and uh, I took about a month off. And uh, I never really taped my hand either. I never did that before, and uh, now I have to. And it's kind of weird getting used to that too. It was uh, kind of a – change you know it was my glove it'd feel like something bigger on there and it was just weird weird feeling and uh had to get used to that but uh now everything feels like normal and uh we're good to go so no you feel it feels good uh, you're not battling yes, pain it just feels good just feels good uh, i feel good um everything's healthy and uh it's just we're just having fun now because that did scare me a little when i heard uh john's got some some struggling with his hand and man, soon as that happens, especially at your age, you just go, Oh crap. You know? So yeah, that's a relief. That is a relief for everybody that it was okay. Oh yes, sir. For sure. You know, cause uh, right before the ETB deal, I was pretty upset that it happened, but I was just, you know, was, everything's going to be all right. I'm going to ride the way I used to. And I wasn't doing as good as I expected. You know, I wasn't just confident myself and I wasn't riding good. So, um, a lot of people just were like, oh, you know, a different level. Uh, he's not going to, he's not yeah. doing the same as we expected, but people just didn't know, you know, about my hand and stuff. I never really talked about it. So, yeah, the old, uh, <laughs> it's the old deal where, oh yeah. Welcome to the big league. See, yeah, everybody yeah, talked sure. up John. So yeah. Yeah. But it's, Hey, it's, yeah. You oh, know I, what? They, they ain't talking now. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> they, they ain't saying nothing else. Okay, so I got to know here in this the last little while some of the things you've done. Are you a wrestling fan? You a WWE fan? I never. I've always kind of watched, you know, John Cena and all them guys, but I never really got into it. And uh, but you know, <laughs> I just like John Cena because you know John John yeah, Cena. Yeah, well, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so tell me about it. You go. You stayed a few a couple of days after L.A. Of course, Matt West went with you because, you of know, course. Yeah. He's, he, I heard he's a, he's a big wrestling fan. That's for sure. Oh yeah. I'm so sure good. he, he knew the ins and outs. He educated uh -huh. you. Um, they, their live show is, I've heard it and I think about it comparatively kind of that's their cell sort of like us in the PBR. It, yeah, sure. it, tell me about what you saw. What'd you take from that? What'd you learn? You know, uh, them, they're just like us, I think, you know, on the board. And like them people, they're, they're there to entertain the crowd, you know, and that's what they were doing. And I got there and I was really wasn't expecting much of a fan base, you know, I thought it wasn't going to be very packed, but that thing got sold out. It was sold <laughs> out and there's a bunch of people there. I'm like, what is going on? Why are there so many people into this stuff? But I kind of get it now because them guys, they're, they're entertaining the people and uh uh there's not very much commentating it's just like them fighting and stuff or wrestling whatever they're doing and whatever they're pretty, doing what? yeah it's pretty interesting you know uh they're they're getting into it and i kind of liked it a lot because i got to go backstage and see what how the ins and outs and all that stuff and uh the guys the, the guy that runs it mostly he's a pbr fan too and he was just pretty cool that to have us there and uh it was pretty exciting just to see them guys they uh before the show like a couple fighters like we're telling the, the producers what's gonna happen all that stuff like what they're gonna do like the moves and stuff and i got to see that it's, i thought it was fake not fake it's uh a scripted. little scripted scripted maybe yeah, yeah. but always i said fake first to Matt West and he bow oh. choked me. Like, oh yeah. Do not say that. Do not say that for it. I'm like, I didn't cuss. I didn't say anything. No, he said fake. I was like, oh sorry. <laughs> uh but like the 
the padding on the wrestling deal, it's it's pretty hard. It's not as soft as I thought. I thought it was like a trampoline or something, but it's not. So pretty cool. Pretty cool yeah. to see all that stuff. I have a lot more respect for them now. Yeah, there's no doubt uh, the, how what great athletes they are. I mean, yeah. uh, script it, it's the F word. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna ask Matt West about that. Like, yeah. John said the F word, fake. That's, <laughs> but uh, it's not fake. I saw your intro on TV. Pat McAfee, it uh, introduced you. Was the commentator to introduce you? He's a big, yeah, uh, you know, he's a, he's a rodeo guy. He always has a buckle yeah. on. Uh, he went with my daughters with their rodeo team a year or so ago and threw a steer. He's always, that guy's a good ambassador for us. He's, he loves him some Cowboys, man. Yeah. He had his buckle on his boots on. He was, he was into it. And then, uh, I watched it back and he was just fired up. I think everyone there was kind of just happy to be there doing their job. You know, like he was, he was just ready to go too. And then, some lady was announcing to it. She was just happy to be there. I think that was pretty cool to see that people enjoyed doing their job, you know? Yeah. Um, deals like that. And I, I mentioned it in a couple interviews about you, you know, here I am doing interviews about you, John. It's crazy. Anyway, without you grew up, just like things like this, things like the WWE appearance, uh, with how you grew up and it's been emphasized a lot. I felt the same way about my kids. I know Sage Kimsey and I have had the conversation with parents who grew up around the, you're ahead of the game a little bit. Like this doesn't bother you at all. Appearances don't bother you. Cause that's, that's kind of what you saw growing up. I think there there's a definite advantage for you, not in the competition part, but in the exposure part, because you know how to handle it so much better. Right. Yes, sir. You know, I had to kind of get used to it. You know, my dad, he's always told me, you know, whenever you're riding good, there's going to be cameras. You're going to have to learn how to talk and all that stuff. And I just kind of had to learn at a young age to, to, to get used to that and stuff. And I had to learn how to speak on camera and all that stuff and what to say and what not to say and all that. So I kind of, it kind of helped me a lot because then I get to, put myself out there more the people they like talking and stuff and i like talking too it's it's pretty fun doing the stuff <laughs> well it, it, we've tried to we uh we uh you know rodeo pbr from a different level side of it we've tried to tell young guys hey if somebody wants to talk to you on tv or something do it well and take the invitation when you can because that does nothing but get your name out there and that's where opportunities come from Exactly. That's what I learned from, you know, a lot of people just start seeing me more. And when, whenever I was younger, they, I'd do a bunch of, you know, interviews and all that stuff. And then my name would get out there more and all that stuff. So, and then that was, that was pretty cool to see because I just never liked talking on camera. I always was a shy guy, but then I just had to get used to it, you know? Yeah. What'd you, uh, as you were growing up, cause John, I've known you for quite a while, you know, here you're this little kid around with your dad and your mom. And did you uh, grow up speaking more Portuguese or more English in your household? So whenever I grew up, my first language was actually English. It was English. And then we moved back to Brazil. That's when I learned Portuguese. And then after that, I just kind of in my house, though, we do talk more Portuguese. So I don't lose it and all that stuff. That's what, you know, like everyone kind of recommended my parents to do whenever we're growing up. So just so we don't lose it and stuff. And, uh, I speak, I speak Portuguese to my parents all the time. I don't like, it kind of feels uncomfortable speaking in English to my dad and my mom. It's weird. Uh, as <clears throat> someone, uh, <clears throat> we, we used to have the, the bilingual discussion in my household. My girls took a lot of Spanish and things. When you're a little, when you're a little kid, you don't, you don't learn them. You, you learn them parallel to each other, correct? Yeah, You're never right. translating. You just yeah. know one and you know the other. Am I, yes, is sir. that a good way to do it? To, yeah, I, I mean, mean, is that a good way to describe it? I mean, yes, yeah, sir. It is. Cause I think, uh, whenever you're younger, you learn a lot faster. Like some of the Brazilian board riders that their kids and stuff, they go to school, but they only knew English. 
or Portuguese, I mean, they go and go to school, like, they learn English fast, and now they just speak English fluently, so it's like, I feel like a little kid learns a lot faster, because it's not, like you said, not translating, it's just like, they learn one, then they learn the other. You, uh, I would appreciate it, though, if every once in a while you'd go, know what I mean, buddy? Know what I mean, buddy? Know what I mean, buddy? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I joke around sometimes and be like, oh, okay, okay, I'll speak a little little broken English. Just be a little, you know. <laughs> Your dad, I, the fun, hey, the funniest one is those guys that uh, they don't speak hardly any English, but they imitate Paulo Krimber. Oh, that, yeah, I know. It's funny. Your dad... He had broken English, but he learned to speak English in Texas. So it was this weird uh, half Texas accent, half Portuguese. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, he's, he's, everyone that looks at him and listens to him and doesn't know him, they think he's a Texan and he's not Brazilian at all. But yeah. he just learned that, I guess, just yeah. watching movies and all that stuff. Most of you Texans struggle with English anyway. So, you know, yeah. no big deal. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Texas is, it's, I like Texas the way they speak. It's, I like their accent. Oh, like that Pat guy on the WWE. I was trying to tell him my town. I was like, Decatur, Texas. He's like, huh? What, what kind of accent are you doing right now? I'm like, Decatur, Texas. And he's just making fun of my accent because it was Texan. So, one thing. PBR has put up is some episodes of a little series they did. And it's really good. That's where I did some interview stuff for you. I, is it called Rise to Greatness? The John Kerber, yes, the series. Yes, sir, it is. It, it Very well done. Uh, it, it's entertaining it, the way it was put together. I know the guys that have kind of filmed it and edited it. Really good. Um, are you still young enough? You don't, it, it, I always say, too young to know better, but is there some pressure there with the other guys? Do they give you a bad time? Do you talk about that? What's oh. your feel with that coming out right now? So my friends actually, a couple of them kind of make fun of me a little bit because some some things on there, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but some things were a little scripted, you know, like I had to, it, it was, they made me say it in a different yeah. way and all that. And uh, it was, they kind of made fun of me for the way I said it, but they were just giving me crap, you know, but, um, I did feel a little pressure cause they wanted to do that. Like right before my UTB debut and all that stuff. And when I showed up there, it was kind of like cameras were on me and it was kind of sucked cause it was my first UTB and I was already nervous and there's already there's cameras and stuff. And it just, it kind of got in my head a little bit, but then the second day at my first UTB deal, it was kind of like I got used to it, you know, but, mm -hmm. um, that's the thing was I, my dad, like my dad said, if you're riding good cameras are going to be on you. So you kind of just have to get used to it, you know? Yeah. But it is hard though. I thought of that. It, it It's really, it is good, but it's called rise to greatness. And they started filming it really before you went to any unleash the beast events. So in a yes. sense, crap, I have to rise to greatness here. You know, what if I buck off every bull the first three months? You know, oh, I mean, yeah. really. No, like it, it got to me. I really did get in my head the first couple. First two, I was really, really like kind of just thinking. I was like, what if I'm just not like going to gonna achieve all the things I want and people are just going to be like, oh, he's just – you know, he was just good at the junior road is and all that stuff and challengers. But whenever he got to big leagues, he wasn't, you know, doing the same thing because of just a bigger stage or something. You know, I was just kind of scared of people saying that. But then what really clicked was when I my hand what didn't didn't hurt it was after Mass Square Garden. I went to went to that I went to New York, Chicago, then in Tulsa, I was fixing to be cut. Like I was thirty fifth in the world. I was really I was on borderline and then the first day I rode a bull in Tulsa. That was my last event before I got cut. I rode a bull, I was seventy six and a half. And I rode I so I got a re ride, rode that one for seventy six and a half, then I got another re ride and, and it was Manaba, you know, that bull was in the short round mm -hmm. almost every weekend. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? 
I'm just going to take my score and ride all three bulls and make sure around and win this thing. And they're like, why did you not take it? I was like, well, I just need some points. I got really – a lot of people said a lot of things about that for me not taking it, you know. A couple guys were like, you know, you're you're on a different level now. You got to do those type of deals to get on those type of bulls. And I'm like – I really did get in my head. I'm like, you know what, what if I'm not just meant to be in here? Second day I got out there, I rode my bull for 85 and a half in the second round. And I come in second in the short round. That was the short round where there was like eight 90 point rides. Yeah. And everyone was riding. In my mind, I was like, you know what? I came in second. I'm probably going to finish top five. And even if I book off short round, well, I really didn't have no confidence in riding. I had Montana Jack at the short round. I was like, might ride him, might not, you know, because that's when my hand first started feeling better. And I was still kind of iffy about it. And, I just like, you know, I'm going to ride him, maybe buck off. And it's, even if I buck off, I'll be in the top five. But everyone started riding, so I was like 10th. So I did, really didn't have enough points already. It's like, well, you know what? I'm going to just stay on. I'm going to stay on. <laughs> so I got out there and uh, ride him for 91 and a half, uh, went second because Joe Al was like 12 points ahead of us mm. in this, going in the short round. But just for me staying on that caliber of a bull in the short round, and it kind of, that's when everything started clicking. I'm like, you know what? I'm, I belong here. I belong in between all these good guys and stuff and riding all these ranked bulls. And then right then I jumped to 13th in the world and then just kept, yeah. kept going from there. Yeah. You, you read the room. I mean, you're, you're in a situation that you needed points there. You'd have been gone. So yeah, you, sir. yeah, there's a lot of this, you know, a lot of it. At, it, at this level, it's not just a peaceful, you're going rodeo to rodeo there. You get it from the guys you ride with. You get it from announcers, TV analysts, fans. Yes, it, sir. It, you you got to build a little wall there, don't you? You, you got to do what's best for you in the situation. Yes, sir. Yes, that's what people don't understand sometimes. It's I wasn't riding the best at that time. And Manaba, you know, that's one bull that he's in the short round almost every weekend. And he's in the re-ride pin. And I was, wasn't confident enough in myself just yet just to be – be able to handle that situation, you know, and I was just thinking about points and stuff and it kind of worked out the way it's supposed to. So I'm kind of glad I took three. Mm. I didn't take three reds. Uh, in the words of our friend, Clint Atkins, situational awareness. That's his big thing. Situational Situ awareness. awareness. <laughs> uh, we talk, uh, a, a main topic on the YouTube tour when young guys come up is the bigness, the the bigness, I'll use that word, of a UTB event. You can watch it on TV. You can hear people talk about it until you're in the midst of one, whether it's in my job as an announcer, as a writer. It's a different world, isn't it? I mean, there. somebody told me one time, a new guy said, they put on a rock concert and expect us to ride a bull in the middle of it. it no, it, it's... They're fun, aren't they? Oh, it's so... I always watched it on TV. I always kind of went and watched too at the events and I always, you know, dreamed myself being there in that situation. And whenever it happened, I remember just sitting there and the pyro goes off. And I'm like, Whoa, like this is something else. Like, and then whenever you walk, you walk through the curtains and all that stuff, it's, it's pretty cool. Cause you get, you're all with the other riders, but what really, what I like the most is whenever we're on top of the buck and shoots and they, that's what I kind of just stand out and stuff like top five in the world. They do that. It It's a different feeling right then. Cause then it's, they're just spotlighting you and you're, it's, it's just you right there. And then you're on top of the buck and shoots. You see all the people there and it's just a different feeling. Like it's, it's crazy, but it's very fun though. It's just, you just get a different feeling. Like you, it's like lights of fire in you and, you're just ready to go out there and do your job and stay on your bull. I've seen it go either way. I, I think that getting to that level, depending on a guy's mental state, can go either way. Either the pressure gets to you and you try so damn hard you can't ride anything, or, you know, a guy like you said, you got in your head but then came out of it. You can take the energy like any sport. On a yeah, big sir. stage, a lot of guys shit the bed. And a lot of guys rise to the occasion. Those events are the same way. We've seen that, right? There's guys, you're going one way or the other there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So at one point I was really getting in my head and then, you know, want to ride so bad, like wanting to stay on so bad that it just didn't, didn't go the way I wanted to, you know? And 
after I just kind of got loosened up and want, just having fun again, that's when I used that, you know, pressure and all that stuff as an advantage and going out there and staying on my bulls, you know, it just kind of lit a fire in me and I wanted to just go out there and if it happened to happen, if it didn't, just whatever, you know, you got, got more. So that's what, that's what my mentality was now. Um, your, was it your first ride on the UTV that you gave your dad a little shout out, a little yeah, celebration? Sir, a little, <laughs> little, little dance, you know, cause it was second day in Tucson of my first event that I heard Kate that right before I got on, they were talking about me and they were interviewing my dad. And then they're asking him like, is he going to do the dance? like you did and he's like well he's not very good at it and he's a little shy he probably won't i was like i listened to it. i heard him i was like oh no i'm doing it if i stay <laughs> on i go out there ride him and i did the dance and then actually in sacramento he was the shoot boss and i rode my second round bull and uh after i rode him i look over to him and i call him over and I'll start doing the dance with him. I don't know if anyone got that, but I did it. I called him over and I mean him do the dance in the arena. That was pretty cool too. I see videos pop up randomly, <clears throat> old videos of me and your dad. And he was one of the first guys, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard the story. Adriano came to me and said, Hey, the new guy, he can really dance well. And, and your dad didn't speak English at all, but we communicated about it and started it. And right. it just, dance. it just freaking took off. You know, yeah, sir. And I bet the fans and stuff always like that interaction with y'all too, too. Yeah, it was correct. It people, then they start to expect it. You know, I yeah. think there's something to that. The old, the old timers, when guys started celebrating and doing little dances, you know, the old timers never liked it because they're boring and yeah. grouchy, but the true, the people that come every week, they love that stuff. There's oh, been yeah, guys. Sir. You know, remember Mike Lee used to just run a lap? Just run a lap. <laughs> Don't know why, but he just ran a lap and people loved it. Don't know why. Just, yeah. <laughs> hey, I saw Mike Lee one time ride a bull in Calgary. Yeah. Have you been you been to Calgary? I've never been, but I heard that arena is huge. He he died. He got, got about two thirds of the way around and had to stop. Because it was too big. <laughs> I bet the people were just looking at him like, what are you doing? What, what is man? this? Where are you we going? Go. What's yeah. the hurry? Where are you going? Yeah. Uh, I do want to say, cause we've taught everybody brings up your dad and stuff. And my girls have gone through the same thing. Let's be real here. We, uh, we talk about your dad because we know your dad and he was in the spotlight, but you know, my girls know this about their mom too. Your mom, you got a great mom, man. She's cool. Yeah. Sir. yeah so a lot of people don't know, but, Whenever I was going to them junior rodeos and stuff, my dad had to go work on the weekends to go translate. But my mom was the one that took me everywhere and had to drive me because I didn't have a license or anything. And uh, she's the one that actually had to sacrifice her weekend to go, you know, instead of go shopping, she'd go take me to the bull riding and, uh, while my dad was working at the PBR. So uh, she's, you know, she's the whole reason why I'm here, I think, because – She's the one that had to drive me everywhere and all that stuff. So, yeah, I I've talked about that a lot. My girls can relate that. Okay. Yeah. People talk about me because I'm the, the one they know, but really yeah. when it comes down to it, it's the mom, it's your mom, my girl's mom. Uh, I know that my girl's mom, she's the one that drove them to all the, it's the exact same thing. She drove them to all those high school rodeos, junior high rodeos, pulled the trailer, fed the horses, but then people know our name and it is always, it kind of yeah, eats sir. at me a little bit. I'm sure your dad knows though. Oh yeah. So my mom, she never really got the credit for what she's done, but like she, she's the one that took me everywhere and uh, took care of me, you know? And cause if it wasn't for her, I would, I wouldn't even be where I'm at today. Cause I wouldn't be able to go to them junior rodeos or high school rodeos and all that stuff. And our high school rodeos, we had to wake up at five in the morning and go get on. Cause our yeah. Bull riding was first and it started at eight in the morning and it's, it sucked. It was horrible. And yeah. she's the one that woke me up and took me over there. So. Yeah. And literally, if it wasn't for your mom, you wouldn't be here. Literally. Yeah. Like literally. literally. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Like if, if it was like, not for her, I would not be here. You would not be here. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what? I'll bring it up now. Cause I thought it, 
there's different people come along. I, we were, we never got to be in the arena together at a PBR. I'm mad at you still for that. Cause I, <laughs> last year I told my dad, I was like, I'm going to start doing the dance plant and all that stuff. I was pretty excited. Then you had to retire, I guess. And I don't know why, but he retired and I was pretty, pretty upset about that. But we actually did do it one time. I don't know if you remember in the mini bull riding. Little, little, you were little. Yeah. Yes, sir, and the mini bull riding, and uh, yeah, you know they invited some guys to go get on just for show at the mini oh. bull deal with PBR deals, and uh, I I did that, and uh, we danced one time. Where I'm trying to think where it was, but it was at intermission. They had the mini bulls, and you kind of I even remember you kind of came over, and we both did the. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, I'm we right. did. It. I remember we so we did dance one time, but it wasn't for you know. For the big big show deal, but it's whatever. And you know what I mean. You know what I mean, buddy. You uh, real quick. It, it's been the top top four, like L.A. for instance. The top four guys were rookies. Yeah. Yes. Sir. The the big thing, and listen, I get on all the inside meetings in the PBR. The big thing is this the this class of rookies. Man, it's a for one, it's a relief to see young bull riders do so good. But what a fun time for you guys. You got you and Clay Guyton, oh. Cassio's in there. But what fun time for you guys. The, a bunch of young, bunch of 18-year-old little baby faces around. That's cool. Yes, yeah, sir. You know, like Caden Loud, Clay Guyton, Marco, and all them guys. We we grew up riding with each other at them junior radios. And being in the locker room with them, it's kind of like we're back in the same place we always been and grew up and, you know, like the high school radios and all that stuff. And it's kind of kind of cool to see that you know we're coming in there like first second and third and all that stuff it's just it, it's like a like you said it's a relief to see some like a bunch of new guys it's not just us there's a lot of good talent like young talent coming in this year and uh it this rookie class i told a bunch of people my like, this is the best rookie class i've seen in a long long time i if can't not, that's i can't history Somebody asked me, has there ever been a rookie class better? I'd have to look back because I can't always keep track of who were rookies. I can't remember. I, I feel like this rookie, see, like whoever, like for me, if I win the rookie of the year, it's going to feel like I won a world title going against those guys. You know, it's going to yeah. be mean more to me than probably the world title, if I'm going to be completely honest. That's cool. At rookie of the year is huge. I agree. Yeah. Um, I will say Marco Rizzo. He's got, he's one up or two up on all you guys. He's the only guy that's ever ridden in the PBR that has a Cooper tire fan of the night buckle. And he's got two of them. He does. He does. And I remember when he got it too, it was in Florida and he was texting us like, dude, I just won the Cooper tire fan of the night deal. I was like, oh my God. Of course, Marco would win. Marco is the only one in our friend group that would win it too. Because yeah. he's like, he's. He's there. He's having a good time. So uh, it's been pretty cool to see that, too. Uh, that guy, he kills me. He danced like Michael Jackson, man. He won. It it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. He's, he's, yeah. he's something. He's something else. Yeah. Letting it warm up a little bit again. We're choppy again because we're almost done. We're almost done, John. I got one more thing, and oh. then I'm just letting it catch. It's weird that it fades in and out a little. It's been good. Okay, now we're good again. Um, you guys, speaking of good rookies, you're going to get drafted to the into a team. It's going to boost the team thing. You're going to benefit from these coaches. Um, would you? Would it be hard to be on the team that your dad's coaching? Has that been talked about? What, what's that feel like? Uh, I feel like that'd be honestly pretty cool. For me because he's always coached me and my board and career and uh i feel like it'd be nice for me to be on his team because we he understands how i ride and what bull i should get on and all that stuff uh, but at the same time i really wouldn't want to go on that team because of what people would say i think some of the riders i feel like they'd get kind of iffy to put me on certain bull and all that stuff you know i feel like they kind of get mad about that but I'd really love to be on my dad's team, but some people I get, I don't think they'd like that at all. Good point. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a tough, you know, coach's kid. Does, does the, 
does your dad favor you or does is he harder on you? That's always the yeah, big question. That, so, yeah, um, uh, you got to be looking forward to that though, don't you? The team stuff, it's a little oh, different. Yes. I wish fans understood. It's a different energy. It, it It's cool. So I've been, whenever my dad was coaching the Ridge Riders and all that stuff, I was on the Bucks shoes sometimes. And uh, I was there for the team finals when they won second the first year. And I really was kind of iffy about the team deal, but then I got to be around it and stuff. And it's like a different atmosphere. Like it's a team, like you're, you're cheering for your teammate to go out there and do good. So, your team does good so it's pretty cool I, I'm really excited like I generally am really excited about it like I I'm looking forward to it I really am it's I think it's gonna be a good deal you know like a bunch of rookies coming up too and then the draft and all that stuff and I'm pretty excited about it yeah uh, I am too I'm excited to see all you guys uh all the young guys in there so um listen moving ahead I'll I'll give you I mean I'm not I like giving young guys advice, but you've had so much good advice from your mom and from your dad, but this means a lot to us. And I've seen you do a lot of media things. Uh, I tell my girls all the time that you can win all the buckles. You can have all the success, but people, what people remember you for is this yeah. and how you treat people so far. So good, John. I mean, you're doing it the right way coming Thank from you, me sir. to you. I just want you to know that. Yeah. Yes, sir. That means a lot coming um, to you, you know, just an old guy and nice guy. <laughs> but you are still a turd, kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I promise. Uh, listen, it's going to be a fun UTB rest of the way. We're halfway done. Uh, team series. It's it's a joy to watch you. Keep it up, man. Thank proud you, of you. Thank We're you. proud of you. Thanks, man. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me on here today. Always. You got it.